Hello, everyone. I'm Larry Ridley. You're tuned into the NFL on EA Sports. Here we've got a couple of big targets who will try to be key contributors in both the pass and run games today. It's the Vikings going up against the Steelers. With that, it's time to hook up with our commentators in the booth as we turn it over to Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Right at the convergence of the three rivers on Art Rooney Drive, we welcome you to Heinz Field in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And this was the scene just a few moments ago as the Pittsburgh faithful were fired up by the hometown Steelers taking the field. They're all set as they'll match up with the Minnesota Vikings. Hi again, everybody. Alongside my partner, Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. And Charles, we saw Larry focus on the tight end matchup in his open. You think it's one to watch, don't you? Definitely one to watch because these guys can create such big plays by all the different things they can do. Line up out wide in the slot, line up in a normal tight end position, and then who are you going to cover them with? Is it a linebacker, a defensive back? They create mismatches all throughout the game. Here we go from Heinz Field as Chris Boswell tees it up and boots it away. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And no thought to bring this one out. He'll just go down to a knee, and they'll take over at the 25. So here's the Viking offense making their way out. The former Oklahoma Sooner will be leading the charge in his eighth season now under center Sam Bradford. A lot will be made of his accuracy and the completion record he set in 2016 where he completed 71.6% of his passes. But it doesn't surprise me at all. That's always been the number one part of Sam Bradford's game coming out of Oklahoma. His ability to deliver the ball accurately on time and leave his receivers in a great position. First down, Bradford. And Rudolph has it left side. And he'll get it up near the 35, right at the 34 here. Give him nine there on the first down completion. Talk about a combo that works really well. Sam Bradford, short, dart-throwing quarterback, and Kyle Rudolph able to work the seams inside and make those tough catches. Now Rudolph wound up shattering his career high with 83 catches last year, third among NFL tight ends. First carry for Latavius Murray. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. They get five out of that one, and it moves to James. You and I both know that you don't really, truly replace Adrian Peterson, but Latavius Murray's a really good back. Similar running styles, too. Won't wear the same number, we know that. But when you see him run, you might see a little bit of that in him, upright with some power. They go back to Murray on first down. Finding some room at midfield. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. It's a pickup of 16 there, and it'll lead to a new set of downs. But well, last year, I'm not sure we saw very many of those runs, did we, from the Vikings? I mean, they had the poorest rushing attack in the league. Just 75 yards per game, but carries like the one we just saw, that'll help bolster that average. Yeah, certainly, and they tried to beef up the offensive line in the offseason, brought in Latavius Murray, and then drafted Dalvin Cook out of Florida State. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. Here's Bradford. And Rudolph has it, the tight end. And some big time hitting going on there. He is knocked to the ground. Give him nine there on the first down completion. Seeing that play and understanding just how tough it is to cover tight ends, especially the ones running around the NFL nowadays, makes me glad I didn't make it in that league. I would have had a really difficult time. But now you get to sit up here with me. Yeah, and that's fun, isn't it? <laughs> and what a really nice game right there on first down for them. Brings up a nice second down for them. First carry now for the rookie, Dalvin Cook. And he'll work it inside the 30 to the 29-yard line. Seven yards there, good enough to move the sticks. I remember the first time I saw Dalvin Cook play in college. I was watching him on TV, called a scouting friend of mine and said, 
who is this guy? He's special. And he said, dude, you're watching a home run hitter on the field. Yeah, he was special in Tallahassee. Left Florida State, their all-time leader in rushing yards and touchdowns. So they pick up the first down after the run, and now they approach for the fresh set. Working out of the gun, Bradford. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. Well, let's take a look here at the offense for Minnesota. Minnesota had a very optimistic vision of what they would do on offense in 2016, but a couple of key injuries altered that landscape. Running back Adrian Peterson and quarterback Teddy Bridgewater. That led to them scrambling throughout the season to try and fit together their offense, try to put the running game and a new passing game together. And instead of having a big year, they finished 28th overall in total offense. Throwing again, Bradford on second and 10. He's got it complete to Stephon Diggs. But fortunately, he's able to recover his own fumble, or that could have been trouble. And defensively, maybe an opportunity miss there. No doubt about it. When that ball's out, all you're thinking about as a defender is, this is our chance to make a huge play. Instead, he's able to recover his own fumble. And Big usually, sigh of relief, huh? Yeah, usually those wide receiver fumbles, there's open space around for the defense, but not there. He hops right back on it. Here comes the seventh play of this opening drive. They've moved it well, but here's third down. the shotgun it's Bradford under pressure and he will go down sat back at the 38 Bud Dupree able to get him down for a loss of 11 on the play and it'll be fourth down well we knew this guy wasn't especially fleet of foot but he tried to conjure up some escapability but there was no way he was getting away on that one Ryan Quigley, fifth-year man from Boston College, in to punt it away. Back deep for the Steelers, Antonio Brown. He gets it away, and I think they'll smartly play keep away here from Brown. And this one will sail out of bounds. It'll depend on the spot here. And the side judge says that went out at the seven-yard line. The Minnesota defense, we watch them get set to roll. Great starting field position here for the offense. On first and ten, it's Roethlisberger. And this is caught by Martavis Bryant. And brought down, but not before they're able to get it up to the 25. The Steelers able to pick up 18 yards there. And Martavis Bryant back in the fold, which delights not just himself, but of course his quarterback, Ben Roethlisberger. This guy, he can do it all, Brandon, able to go across the middle and stave off contact and make catches. Sat out last year, as you're alluding to, year before, though, 50 catches, 765 yards, and six touchdowns. Here's the first carry for Le'Veon Bell. Even with the nice move, can't go very far. Stop short of the 30. A gain of three, second down. I once had a defensive player in the NFL tell me, if I beat and dominate the guy across from me, I'm helping my team. Well, winning one-on-one -on -one battles is always a part of the game, but when you have good team defense, as we just saw there, a one broken tackle, but he didn't get away because the rest of the guys arrived to put him on the ground. On second down, Roethlisberger. This is caught by Antonio Brown. Roughness. 
And a little too much extracurricular there. When you have a game with a lot of contact, tensions are going to run pretty high. You're going to be emotional, but you have to harness it somehow, and he didn't on that play. And now first down following that long game. From the gun, it's Roethlisberger. And that's complete to Jesse James. And he'll go down here right around the 23-yard line. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. They gave up the completion there, but this is what zone defenses count on. Catching the ball and not much run after the catch. Counting down toward the midway point in corner one. Roethlisberger now off the bootleg. Looking left side and he's got a man. It's James. They'll try and run for it with Bell. He lost two, and it brings up fourth. One of my favorite safeties in the league is Harrison Smith. His ability to support in the run game, as we just saw there, that's key, but also can cover deep as well. Now Chris Boswell for the Steelers' field goal try. From the right hash, this from an even 40 yards out. And Boswell's kick is good. And the Steelers will jump out to a three-zip lead. So the folks here in the stands this afternoon, they're happy about that when their guys get the early advantage after the opening drive field goal. And they should be happy. Their guys look good getting down the field, and that's got to give them hope that good things are in store here today. After the successful field goal try, here's Boswell to send it away. This is taken about seven yards deep. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. The Steelers' defense getting ready here. And we're going to get a peek at some of the hits that have helped them get this first-half lead. And you know how the best hits happen? by being really good on that side of the ball in terms of fundamentals, being in the right spot, diagnosing plays well, and being there at the point of attack. They are really making it happen. Murray now as they run it to start the drive. That's going to go as a loss of a yard and it'll be second down. Well, you had to punt on your first drive and on the first play of the second drive you end up going backwards. I would dare say they need something good to happen right here right now. So now 11 yards to go for this offensive unit. It's second down.
They go with Murray again. Looking to find a lane, but he can't rein in at the line of scrimmage. Maybe a gain of a yard that time, but half on the spot, actually no gain. So third and long. And a look at the Steelers' defensive unit. In the NFL, when you say Pittsburgh, you do think defense. And in 2016, they ended up 12th overall in total defense, which is a good number, but not the number the Steelers seek. And if they get better play from their secondary, they'll get back into the top 10 where they feel they belong each and every year. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. Play action now, Bradford. And they can't get the long connection as it falls incomplete. It's a great job by this secondary. When I watch them, they remind me of elite defenders on a basketball court, right? They want to contest each and every pass. Great contest on third down to bring up fourth. Here's Ryan Quigley now as he'll kick it away for the second time. And a fair catch signaled for and taken just outside the 20-yard line. 51 yards on the punt there. And the Steelers will go on offense here, first and 10. Pittsburgh's offense now heading back out onto the field. And they split the uprights last time for three. They've got the lead. They're not going to play this conservative. They're, they're not hoping for another field goal. They're hoping for a touchdown. I'm with you on that one. I like where your head is. I like the way you're thinking because you're exactly right. Try to sit on a lead and play that way. That doesn't work too well for most teams. Run your offense. Yep. Run what Put you do best. On the gas. Exactly. Put it all the way down and try to increase your lead in a big way. And the best way to do it, touchdowns. To throw here, Roethlisberger. James has got it. Complete. And he'll be brought down right at the 30 here. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. All right, I'm doing my rudimentary math here. That's his third catch here in the first quarter. I don't know if it's just game plan or he's just finding his way open. Yeah, maybe a little of both. Second down now after the pass completion. Now Roethlisberger going to hand a bell. And he's able to get out to the 32 brought down there. Three yards there, good enough to keep the drive moving. Second and two is prime time for a little bit of a gamble, isn't it? Open up the playbook, go play action, toss that bad boy deep. But in this situation, go ahead and give it to your back. Let it pick up a first down, keep the sticks moving. So it'll be first down here after the run. Gone. It's Roethlisberger. Now been hit, and he lost the football. It's loose. But it looked like the Steelers were able to recover, and they will indeed hold on to the ball. On plays like this where the ball comes free, it's often unusual for the team that lost it to get it back because this is, this is the quarterback. The ball gets away from him. Everyone else is trying to execute what they're supposed to do on offense. They're usually looking in the other direction, downfield, or have moved away from him. In this case, though, a teammate is able to come up with the ball. So they almost turn it over there. Scary moment, second down here. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he will lose yardage on the play, back at his own 19-yard line. He lost two there, and it's third down. Well, add that play to his resume reel, because he went to the Pro Bowl last year. That's how you go to the Pro Bowl. You make plays like that, big-time penetration, and throw people for losses. Need something from deep in the bag of tricks here after first and second down went backwards. It's third and very long. 
From the shotgun, it's Roethlisberger. And he's going to be out of bounds up around the 45-yard line. A good pick up there, 26 yards. In order to be a great player, you have to be consistent. Antonio Brown is definitely that. Four straight seasons with 100 or more catches. How many more years do you think he can put up that type of production? I think at least another four in a row because their offense is built to get him the football, whether it's outside, inside, and he's a featured guy, and I think that he really, really wants to continue at this pace. So we've got a challenge forthcoming here. And new this year, the ref will no longer go to a monitor on the sideline. He'll have a tablet brought out directly to him on the field. Yeah, and that should move things along a little bit quicker. He doesn't have to run all the way over, go under the hood as he used to, and come out and render a decision, talk directly with New York, looking at the tablet, and reach a final call. Welcome back, the offensive unit. They took the timeout, and now they get set to line up as we resume action. So here we go, first and ten now. Now it's Roethlisberger. And he connects with Vance McDonald. And he'll take it down shy of the 45 at the 46. Give him nine there on the first down completion. And when you're playing a quarterback with some experience and some moxie, you enter the danger zone when you decide to blitz him because if he's able to diagnose as he did on that play, he can hurt you downfield. He reads defenses so well, doesn't he? He really does, and the best part about that play for him I don't think that was his primary target. I don't think so either. I think he had the read, figured out where the blitz was coming from, and went to a secondary target for a really nice game. And he'll be brought down, it looks like, right at the 40. It'll go as a gain of six that time, and it moves the chains as well. At this stage of the game, the run pass numbers are a little bit out of whack because most of the yardage has come through the air. But in a sense, that just sets things up for big runs like that because the defense might be a little bit off balance. They pick up another first down with that run. Throwing now, Roethlisberger on first down. Over the middle complete, it's James. And he gets it down to the 32. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. Now that's staying ahead of the chains. Really good pick up on first down, hitting the tight end there. Now it brings up a second and manageable. Just found a hole in that zone. Before they can run another play, the clock hits triple zeros. And time is up on the first quarter. 3 nothing is our score. More from the Steel City coming up after this. The NFL on EA Sports is presented by Snickers. You're not you and you're hungry. Snickers satisfies. Back with Charles Davis, Brandon Gordon. It's Steeler football to begin quarter number two. They're looking at a second and short yardage to start things out. Roethlisberger with a give to Bell. <laughs> Bell first down and then some. And into the end zone. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. Le'Veon Bell, 32 yards. And the Steelers are going to add on to their lead. 
Well, partner, that was another explosive run. And one thing I've learned in our time in this game, yes, the offensive line has to get a lot of credit. But for big runs to occur, the wide receivers have to block well downfield. And then you have to have a good guy carrying the ball, too, right? Oh, without a doubt. You need that difference maker lugging the rock. It's up and good, and that'll increase their lead to 10-zip. So that drive consumes nine plays all told, and it ends with a Le'Veon Bell touchdown run. Well on now to kick this one away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And all that worked, but he stopped where he ultimately would have been, and he simply taken a knee, and that's the 25-yard line. The Vikings offense now heading out to take over. And this is their third drive. Maybe the focus right now, not so much on points, but getting their first first down. And when you start off a game, you don't even think that's an issue, do you? But you go a drive, a second drive, no first down, that becomes an issue. Now you got to think about, okay, what type of play calling do I have to do to get us in a spot to pick that first one up? down he couldn't quite hold it got hit ball pops out incomplete this team is not gonna make it easy for you they're a physical group and we just saw it there on that play it came in made the contact just as he's trying to haul it in unable to connect on the first down pass play now it's second down Throwing again, Bradford. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Bradford finding Rudolph there for a Viking first. Like so many tight ends nowadays, they have no problem at all putting him in the slot and letting him go to work. And that's a nice pitch and catch right there for a first down. here on first down and no escaping this time as he'll go down they got him for a sack Stefan to it in there to drop him and it'll be a loss of about eight and plays like that really hurt play calling they had a really nice gain on the previous play but gave about half the yardage back on the sack excellent pressure up front nowhere to go with the football down he goes Second down run for Murray. And some room to roam now. He'll wind up getting 11 on that one. And that'll make it third down. It seemed like the situation was second and a mile to go for a first down, which screams what? Throw the football. You got to pass in order to try and pick up that kind of yardage. But in this case, they ran a tendency breaker because the tendency is for defenses to be out there and be set up for a pass. So you break tendency and actually run the football. That changes everything because if you're able to find a crease, you often have bigger guys working against smaller guys downfield. They picked up excellent yardage there to bring up a third down. Right. 
On third down, Bradford. He's going to leave this for his running back. It's complete. And the spin looked pretty, but more for style points as the real estate evaporated quickly there. It's a four-yard pickup, and that's going to make it fourth down. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end, but running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. Here's Ryan Quigley now as he's on to punt for Minnesota. And he's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. And not what he was hoping for there as this will hit in the end zone for a touchback. And Le'Veon Bell making his way back out onto the field now. He's over 40 yards here in the second quarter. Been nice and effective for them, hasn't he? He has definitely been dependable and really shouldn't underestimate what he's getting done here because anytime you're on a pace that's going to approach 100 yards, you've really done some damage in an NFL game. And now he's looking just to add to his totals. They'll start out on the ground with Bell. Fights forward for only about a yard up to the 21. Well, if the coaching staff's doing a good job upstairs, they'll file away what they just saw from the defense right there. They sold out to stop that running play. I'd say keep that in mind. They want to try that again. Go play action and hit them over the top. Now Roethlisberger to throw on second down. And on the left sideline, he caught it, but out of bounds, according to the headlinesman. Incomplete. So the ball a little late getting there, and it's third down. I know for us it's fun, and it's not so much fun for the rookie receivers when we see them coming into the league and we're good at training camps. You see them working on getting two feet down instead of one. But the best ones train in college trying to get two down instead of one, so the transition's a little bit less. In this case, though, wasn't able to complete it anyway. Now Roethlisberger to throw. And this is going to be incomplete. A little too much oomph. Too much mustard there on that pass. They really turned it loose, didn't they? Really cut loose with that one. Sharp, strong. Didn't lead to a completion, though. Made it very difficult. On fourth down, here comes the Steeler punter Jordan Berry to kick it away. Marcus Sherrill's back deep for Minnesota. going to go in the books as a 55-yard punt. Well done. And it'll be Viking football here as they take possession. And out now come the Vikings. The results for them so far, not that great. Well, not good at all. Three drives, three punts. Yeah, and now what you're doing is you're looking at your play sheet. You're trying to figure out what you're going against defensively. I wonder, are they showing them something they haven't seen or anticipated in practice, and maybe that's throwing them off? Or do they just have to go to a different play calling section and try and run some offense that way? They begin the drive with a run by Murray. And he's going to be taken down here with a penalty flag on the field. Holding offense. So a decent game, but all for naught on the penalty. It's too bad, isn't it? They were feeling pretty good about it. The only people celebrating, the guys who just gave up that play. Murray and good yardage as he gets this one up to about the 23 it's a gain of seven on the ground second down coming up he had a ton of success here so far but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one yeah even on that one there was a little bit of a hole but it closed there quickly at the end
Again, it's Murray. And he'll wind up losing yardage here back at the 21-yard line. It's a loss of two, now third down. Wow, that play got shut down in a hurry. As soon as the snap came, you could see defensively they were just closing in. That was going nowhere. Yeah, you count on your offensive line to give you a little bit of space, a little bit of time so you can make a move. There was none there for him. The Vikings on third down. 0 for 3 to this point. They could use a conversion. This is third down and 12. From the gun, Bradford. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. Well, they've had a pretty frustrating first half here offensively, and that just continued there with that incompletion. And definitely frustrating for them, but heartening for the other guys. Those stop troops, they're enjoying things right now because they've made it very difficult for them throughout the half. Here's Ryan Quigley now, as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. With it is Brown. They'll call that a punt of 59 yards. Tough to do better than that. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. There again is the running back as he trots onto the field. And he's had his chances in this game. He just hasn't been able to find any daylight so far. Patience, patience, patience. And that's the hard part for a runner because they expect every run to be a big one for something to pop. So they have to sometimes go through the struggles before it happens for them later in the game. But he got to give credit to the rest of the team. They've worked around the fact that he hasn't had his normal big game. Yeah, despite his struggles, still winning here in the second quarter. They'll throw on first down with Roethlisberger. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. That's very well timed there defensively because it's not a bad throw, but the collision came at the exact time he was reaching to bring in the football. Really, really well done. Decent offense, just better defense. I think you're right. Second and 10. It's Roethlisberger once more. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. The reception good for seven. It's third down. If you're running out route, it's likely you end up near the sideline. And what did we just see there? The toe tap. You got it. The benefits of practice. Toe tapping, foot dragging, picking it up and making sure it was a catch. And the Steelers on third down. Just one for three thus far. Here it's third and three. Here's Roethlisberger. Yeah, he's got Rodgers. And he will have first down yardage as he's brought down at the 31. Roethlisberger finding Rodgers and the Steelers convert on third down. And a good quarterback facing zone coverage. If he has just a little bit of time to survey the scene, that's what's going to happen. No doubt about it. If there's no pressure, he's going to continue to pick them apart because he'll have all that time to find someone open downfield. You can only cover for so long. So maybe they want to go to a zone blitz scheme, get a little bit more pressure. Remember when Carolina did that against Denver? They lost the game ultimately. They dropped the defensive end out, and he ended up with an interception in that game in Super Bowl 50. Maybe some sort of scheme like that to try and get more pressure at the passing. The passing game in rhythm right now for Pittsburgh. There's another first down. An ex-teammate used to tell me all the time, I hate experienced quarterbacks because no matter what, you really can't hide what you're doing. And I think that right there, he knew right away where the blitz was coming from, where his primary guy was going to be, and he ended up going to a secondary target for a nice game. I was just going to ask you, that wasn't the primary target. It, he's so good at that, isn't he? I think he knew right away that he wasn't going to get to his primary guy. I think he read that as soon as he got to the line of scrimmage, knew where the pressure was going to come from, and said, I, I know how to beat that, and that's what he did. Now a first down carry by Bell. He won't find a ton of space following the display of power as he's down just inside the 45. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Doesn't matter who you're rooting for in this game, the effort of the man with the football getting away from one and trying to turn forward and get some yardage, I really liked what he did there. Hey, hey, 
On second down, here's Roethlisberger. Man open right side, it's Rodgers. And he's going to get this inside the 30. The passing game in rhythm right now for Pittsburgh. There's another first down. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. Can't fault the offensive line for that incompletion at all. He had all day to throw the football. Their alarm clocks went off early today, didn't they? <laughs> Absolutely they did. He was surveying, surveying, finally let it go, but incomplete. Fake to Bell. Now it's Roethlisberger. This will be caught inside the 10. And they do get him down, but he's inside the 5 all the way to the 3. 23 yards on the play. Jesse James, 10 catches, 131 yards in the Steelers' two playoff games last year. A more than reliable tight end. A guy who can create big-time plays downfield. But let's face it, partner, you love calling that name in a game, don't you? <laughs> I do. But as we saw right there, he's really reliable on third down, isn't it? Yes, he is. Jesse James. <laughs> They'll try to run it. This is Connor. And he's going to get this back to the three-yard line and no further. Now whistles and a timeout. Looks like we've got a Viking slow to get up. While the training staff takes a peek, we'll take a break. They'll come out in the pistol. Here we go. They'll try and run it in with Bell. That is not going to be any help as they dump him behind the line of scrimmage. Call that a loss of five yards on the play. And that'll make it third and goal. Partner, I know we're in a goal-to-go situation, but my goodness, think about running the ball here. Not even a thought, yeah, is it? Defensively, they're in a prime spot. And I think the defensive guys are probably expressing themselves to them as well. I wouldn't run it here, guys. You might want to try throwing it. And this offense on third down today, they've hit two for four thus far. This is third and goal. Here's Roethlisberger to throw. Oh, it's a touchdown if he holds on. Instead, it's fourth down. I know every offense wants to start their snaps closer to the goal line, but it's actually harder to throw the ball in those situations. You throw into that tight coverage, you see what happens. Hard to get the ball in there. Not enough space there. Lucky maybe that it wasn't intercepted. And Boswell's kick is good. And that'll push the lead up to 13 to nothing. And Charles, they get the field goal. Took him a dozen plays, though. Work with me on this one. You know what I'm about to say, right? Bend, but don't break. That's what came into play here for the defense. Twelve plays were run at them. They only gave up three points. In a lot of ways, that's a win for the defense. Yep, 
after the successful field goal try. Here's Boswell to send it away. To return, here comes Marcus Sherrill. Gets past one man. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. And now we move our focus to Stephon Diggs. They've got to be thinking, how can we get him a little bit more involved here? Second quarter, you're down, and really, he's been out of the mix. I would agree with that, and oftentimes you hear, well, we're just taking what the defense is giving us. But sometimes that's just not good enough. Sometimes you have to take what you want, and that means getting him the football. Yeah, so far just a single catch in this game. They go play action here on first down. That incomplete crisis averted. Almost picked. Instead, second down. I tell you, Brandon, this defense is playing with some confidence. Haven't allowed a point yet. Flying to the football. I'm telling you, it's almost 11 to the ball on every snap. Another nice job there to force in the completion. So the incomplete pass brings up second down. And now whistles and a flag, and I think we got a jump here. Encroachment defense. Now the movement there coming from the middle of the line. And you understand he wants to get off the ball quickly, but the ball's right in front of him. He has to watch it move first. yards left for the offense it's second down Bradford gonna give it to Murray and he'll lose yardage brought down at the 32 they'll wind up losing three and now it's third down when you put together a formula for winning defense, it's exactly what we're seeing in this game. Controlling the line of scrimmage, attacking, and changing everything so that now they're playing in the offense's backfield. They're playing an excellent game. The Vikings on third down. Not good. 0 for 4 thus far. This is third and 8. From the shotgun, it's Bradford. He's going to launch this thing way down. And that's caught inside the 30. And he is out of bounds inside the 30. A big gain of 39 on third. And that's how you pick up a first down. Not only does he make the catch, but has enough body control to get his feet down inbounds, toe tapping and dragging to make sure he gets it done. First and ten, Bradford. Caught here by Bell. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. 11 more yards that go around, a first down as well. And now the passing game here in the second quarter starting to heat up a little bit. Don't you feel the rhythm starting to happen, right? You see it now, the confidence is starting to rise. I think now as a play caller, because that has happened, you lean on it a little bit more. You don't go totally away from running the football, but you do say, guess what? We can throw it, we can throw it well with a whole lot of confidence. Two minutes remain here in the first half. Back to Heinz Field after this. We're just two minutes away from sending you to Orlando for Larry Ridley in our EA Sports Halftime Report, so don't forget about that coming up shortly. Yeah, it wouldn't be a halftime without him, and we thank him for doing the highlights. Let's go get a snack. For the offense lining up first and ten. Hey, 
Bradford draw play. He gives to Murray. And able to push his way forward here for a good little gain. It's a six-yard pickup, but it gets him to second and four. And there's a run to be happy with. Good, solid yardage. He'll take that any time you hand the ball to a back. Second down, Bradford. Looking left sideline, incomplete. The intended receiver was Laquan Treadwell, and it's third and four. Well, one thing that I've liked defensively is that they've shown him a lot of different looks here in the first half. They've come after him, they've sat back. I think that's what you need to do to keep an offense guessing. And they certainly have kept them on their toes. That's why they haven't had much success on the scoreboard. Bradford from the gun on third down. And he's got Kyle Rudolph. And he won't have the touchdown, but he will have the first down as he's tackled at the two. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. When the Vikings get down this way, they start looking for number 82. Rudolph had 24 targets in the red zone last year, tops in the league. And that's what you do when you have a tight end who understands how to get open in tight spaces. Gronk knows how to do that. Tyler Eifert does it well in Cincinnati. Kyle Rudolph emulates those guys. Now they'll run. Murray. And this will result in him losing yardage. Back to the three. And before the second down play, we'll get a whistle, a signal, and a timeout. As they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. So the offense takes the timeout, and they are back out and ready to rock. Second down, able to get away, able to push his way through. That's caught at the three. They get only a yard there. Now it's third and goal. I know the halftime's approaching, but I don't think he's going to want to take a break. That's his fifth catch. Yeah, they've really been targeting the tight end. This offense so far on third down, they've converted just two for six thus far. They're looking at a third and goal here. They'll run for it. This is Murray. That is not going to be any help as they dump him behind the line of scrimmage. Now on fourth down, we've got a whistle here and a timeout. As they'll stop it with 13 seconds to play in half number one. And we are back here. I'm Brandon Gaughan alongside Charles Davis. So the offense takes the timeout. And now we're set to get going. On now is Kai Forbath to try the field goal. From the left half should be a fairly easy one here. And Forbath will put this one through, 
And they will indeed get on the board here, but still trailing. It's now 13 to three. So a field goal here. They're still down, but they put a dent into that lead before the break. And that's got to feel good because now they've seen that they can put some more points on the board and that gives them a whole second half to get back to where they want to be. And that's in the lead. Forbath now to kick it away after the made field goal. Fielded about a yard deep. <laughs> They'll bring it back to just about the 25, call it the 24-yard line. With time running down, they go down to a knee. So we reach halftime here in the Steel City with the Steelers on top. As we'll send you down to Orlando as we check in with Larry Ridley and our EA Sports Halftime Report. Larry? Thanks, Brandon, and welcome to the EA Halftime Report. I'm Larry Ridley. Let's take a look back at the first half. The Steelers are happy to be in front right now and just want to play two more solid quarters. The Vikings won't panic either. They know they just need to take it one play at a time. So here we go. Let's take a look at some of the highlights from the first half. Now third and eight. Dupree's going to push his way to the QB here. This ends up as a huge loss in yardage. Second and two coming up. Bill's gonna look for space, and he kept off the long drive with a touchdown, pushing the lead to 10. First and 10, defense will get to the QB here. This will go for a loss of eight. So that'll do it for us here in Orlando. Let's get back up to Pittsburgh as we hand it back over to Brandon Guy. So both teams have their marching orders and we'll get going again here in quarter number three. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And the decision to bring it out is going to cost him about seven yards all told as he's taken down back shy of the 20. The Steeler offense now with a football first here to begin the third quarter. They built a good first half lead. Now they have a chance to add on to it. And what I'm thinking is that the offensive staff spent the entire halftime just working with them on here's what we think they're going to do to attack us in the second half. Nice first half that we've had, guys, but be prepared for some change-ups. We're going to see them when we kick it off in the second half. See how they handle any adjustments that might be made defensively. Now Roethlisberger on first down. Throwing the out route incomplete. It's Rodgers. And he's able to get up here to the 26. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. But that's what you're looking for when you want to throw the ball downfield. You want one of those guys who can play out on the perimeter, can play out wide, who can not only get open, but when they're covered, can uncover themselves downfield and create catches. Two 
Play action. It's Roethlisberger. His throw incomplete. Trying to get it there to Martavis Bryant. And it's third and short. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely. Just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. And the Steelers on third down. Two for five to this point. Here it's third and two. Bell. And he's got the first as they'll bring him down at the 28-yard line. Just a gain of a couple, but good enough to keep the drive rolling. Third and two, right? So this is a situation where low man has got to win at the line of scrimmage. But it's not just the low man winning. It's the low man who's winning with some force. And they had that to pick up the first down. Barely picking it up, but they did. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. They snap it at one. Now it's Roethlisberger. Got his man complete over the middle. That's James. And he'll be brought down right around the 37. Give him nine there on the first down completion. Well, clearly one of his advantages as a passer is his height, sit back in the pocket, fired over the middle. That makes things tougher defensively, doesn't it? It really does because your goal is to move the quarterback off his initial spot when he gets his drop back completed. But when you have that type of height, he can stay in there. If he's willing to take the hits and just fire over the top, which saves him time and actually completes a play a little bit quicker than it normally does for a quarterback has to slide and find open space to throw. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. That good for 19 at a first down. And this is an example of breaking down a defense because on a lot of these runs, he's getting past the point of attack. And guess what he's doing? Forcing the secondary guys to have to make a lot of tackles. Roethlisberger will hand to Connor. Give him a couple on the carry there. Second and eight. Well, he was looking for some running room, and there wasn't a whole lot of it there on that play. I think he was lucky to get a couple of yards out of it. Because those defenders, they were rallying to the football pretty quickly. And they still need eight yards for the first here on second down. Roethlisberger. Over the middle, it's caught by Rodgers. A good pick up there, a 22. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz game. And you can drop anyone out of your defensive front. Defensive end, defensive tackle. It doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. From the red zone now, here's Roethlisberger on first down. That is caught inside the five. And all the way down inside the five to the four. Another nice gain, 16 yards there and a first down again. Almost not fair. The big guy running the corner route, being able to lean and push and get to where he wants. So how do you stop it? A lot of times you want to have a linebacker on him, a bigger body guy who can handle him physically. But a lot of times that doesn't work as well because his quickness often wins the route. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit him, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. They come out here in the eye. From the four-yard line, it's first and goal now. Now Bell, and he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Steelers. Le'Veon Bell, his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Steelers find a way to stretch their lead. Still plenty of time left in the game, but now starting to pull away a little bit. Get some breathing room with that one. And I don't want people to think that NFL locker rooms are cookie cutter, that everyone's saying the exact same thing in every situation. 
but I do know that all 32 teams have an emphasis on starting fast. Game being on the second half, no matter what, whether it's first five minutes, first three, whatever, this was a big score to start the second half. And that'll make this a three-score game as the lead moves to 17. A good drive that time as they go nine plays in all. And it ends with a Le'Veon Bell touchdown run. Boswell on now to kick this one away. This fielded at the two. And he'll take this across the 25. A couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. It's the Vikings' turn on offense. We get ready for their first possession of the second half. They trail offense, first time to touch the ball in quarter three, and we'll see what they can do. And I can't wait to see what they have planned because some teams script to start a half. Other teams just go, okay, these are the sequence of plays we want to run. These things worked well for us. And sometimes they throw in that big chunk play right away. <laughs> Shocker. <laughs> try and get after them early and try and create a big play to give themselves some momentum. See what they have up their sleeve. They'll try and get the running game going here with Murray. And he'll do a nice job here just to fight his way back to the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. But at least he was able to break that initial contact, or it could have been a loss. Yeah, give credit to the defensive player, though. What did he do? Made him slow down, slow up his feet, and allowed the rest of the guys to get there to finish him off. Now a second down throw for Bradford. And that's incomplete. He was looking for his tight end there, Kyle Rudolph. And it's third down. Let's face it, you can run the route tree as many times as you want, get in sync, practice it, do all those things. But once you get to game speed, it doesn't always time up quite that well. That one goes incomplete. The Vikings on third down, lacking much success. Just two for seven to this point. This is third and ten. Working out of the gun, Bradford. And this one hauled in by Rudolph. And he's going to have the first down at about the 38. A nice pickup there of 11 yards, and it'll move the sticks. Nice job, nice patience right there. Put him on the right side, let him work his way across, put the ball in his hands, and let him work his way upfield with a catch. Fresh set of downs here. Bradford with a give to Murray. And hard running's going to get him over the 40 to the 42. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. Tough running there. That's a hard earn four yards. Yeah, those are the unsung kind of runs. They don't fill up the stat sheet, but they do set you up in good position on second down. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he'll take this for about four up to the 46-yard line. Two straight four-yard runs, and it is steadily working the ball downfield. To me, they're staying right on schedule. First down, you want four yards or more to set up the rest of the drive. They're getting exactly that. The Vikings on third down. They've converted three times and eight chances. This time, they face a third and two. They'll run here. It's Murray. And he's taken down at the 43, but not before picking up the first. Give them 11 yards that time and a new set of downs. We all love to have a home run hitter in the backfield. Guy can take it the distance. But a short yardage, trying to pick up first downs. 
That big guy, always a nice luxury to have, isn't he? Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. They'll try to throw now. Bradford over the middle here to Rudolph. And the stop here will come at the 38-yard line. Five yards on the catch there brings up second down. Well, the strategy was evident there. Get it to your tight end and make it a one-on-one -on -one play with a cornerback. Who's usually going to win that one? The tight end, but not there. Not in this situation. How about the corner defeating that logic and making a really nice tackle? Carries piling up. It's Murray again. And he works it to the 30-yard line here, right at the 30. It's an eight-yard pickup and leads to a new set of downs. Yeah, once more, strong running. Excellent blocking at the point of attack. They've got a nice little drive brewing right here. So the run moves the chains, and here we go on first down. Here's Bradford. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. He got 18 yards out of that one, and it gets him a new set of downs. As far as tight ends go, this guy's not a speed burner. He's much more of an inline blocking type of a tight end. But how about this last play? Made a nice catch and picked up a first down. That's what impresses me about him. When he's called upon, usually gets it done. safety valve here that's complete and he's able to get it down to the two yard line 10 yards on the pickup there and it'll be second down everyone's got to be able to catch the football doesn't matter what position you play but if you're on offense be aware a ball may come your way Ooh, long drive the defense just cannot seem to catch a break and get off the field They come out here in the eye. Back to the ground game. Here's Murray. Well, as the play call comes in on third down, you have to think about four down territory here. Down a few touchdowns. They need points, and they need big points. And now for the offense, this is play number 11 here on this drive. From the gun, Bradford. He's got his man. It's taken in for a Viking touchdown. Adam Thielen, a one-yard touchdown reception. And the Vikings are able to cut into that deficit. That's the score you felt they had to have here in the third quarter to get back in this game. And you know that there was an emphasis on their side. Hey, we know this. We know where we are. But sometimes that binds you up so much that you try too hard, you don't get the score. A perfect combination of urgency, yet relaxed enough to get it done. Forbath on for the extra point. Ah. 
It's up. It's good. That'll make the score line 20 to 10. So that drive 12 plays in length and it all culminates in a touchdown for Minnesota. Forbath out to kick this one away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. Shoves him aside. And he'll take this up past the 20 and down at the 22-yard line. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. They were able to extend their lead with an opening drive touchdown here in the third quarter, but that just got matched a moment ago. So we know that what they discussed at the half worked. Now, what are the counters to that, right? You don't just run the same things over and over. Some do, but many will also show something and then come back with something else to keep the defense off balance. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. They'll throw on first down with Roethlisberger. Over the middle, complete. That's James. And he'll be brought down right at the 30 here. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. And that's one of his advantages of a passer, is it not? With his height, setting back there in the pocket, firing it over the middle, he can really see everything clearly. It is, and I know that other quarterbacks get it done different ways, all right? You don't have to be his height to make a great play. But what he does is he takes away having to make those slide steps in the pocket to find angles to throw the ball through. He just goes right over the top of it because he can see everything. And sometimes that saves time and gets the ball to a receiver quicker. A gain of four that time as the drive continues. Third quarter and you've got the lead. You're not ready to go into that four-minute offense to close the game out. But a running game can really benefit your team right now. So the run gets them the first, and now they operate with a fresh set of downs. Now a play fake here on first down. This one complete right side to McDonald. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. And the play goes for 19 yards, gives him a new set of downs. There are so many things to watch for when you play defense. And reading your keys, you always hear about that, and having your eyes in the right place. Sometimes your eyes can fool you. How about that play action there? It sprang the big guy, didn't it? Able to dump it over the top to him. Bell and he stopped immediately there. Officially no gain on the play and it's second down. So nothing there. I don't know that that's all in the back though. You got to look at blocking there don't you? I would agree with that totally. At some point they have to win at the point of attack. Instead it was the defense getting it done again and holding them to no gain. And as they come to the line they will not be able to get off another play as time has run out on this third quarter. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Pittsburgh. It's Steeler football, and they have the lead as well as we begin quarter number four. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. Right 
On second down, Raffelsberger. This is Bell on the dump off. And he'll get it down here to the 43. A gain of four on the play. And they're going to face a third down. And the Steelers on third down. They've hit at 50%. Three of six to this point. This will be third and six. Out of the gun, it's Roethlisberger. And he's got Rodgers. And that is what you call a hit stick. Put down to the ground hard. They get nine yards there, and they get a first down. He's been the go-to guy. They needed a big play there on third down. Went his way, it worked out. Doesn't matter whether they've scouted it or that they think he's going to get the ball. He has a knack for finding his way open and completing the connection. They'll go back to the ground with Bell. And he'll get a little over two, maybe a full three down to the 32-yard line. Offensively with the lead, you want to run the ball, keep the clock going, but you also want to still kind of be in attack mode too, right? So how do you do that and not come back on your heels? Yeah, think about all the practices we've watched where they have that tempo period to go over things just like this, where they describe the scenario tell you what they're looking for and make sure that they're still attacking yet at the same time not going so fast as to leave too much time on the clock. Vance McDonald the tight end was the target. Third down here. And not to get too overcritical there because he knows what he's doing but his shoulders looked a little off kilter there when he threw that. I don't think you're being overly critical there. You're just analyzing it and he gets those shoulders right that pass will go from incomplete to complete. Now flags will come in. I think this one's going to be on the defense for jumping. So they jumped on the left side of that line. And you know when you're at the end spot, you are like in the starting blocks, waiting for the pistol to fire and go. And he jumped a little bit too early. And the Steelers on third down. They've hit four of seven. This time it's third and three. From the shotgun, it's Roethlisberger. He gets it to Brown, complete. And he's going to get the first down here as he's taken down at the 22. Roethlisberger hooking up with Brown to get the Steelers a first. Charles, you think Big Ben is happy to have Antonio Brown on the other side of his passes? You know he is, but he also expects it. it this is how their offense runs best. When those two get together, especially early, and continue to do it throughout the game, the end result is the one we're seeing right now. They're ahead on the board. It has been early and often. They'll run it with Bell. And he'll at least get him inside the red zone here, down to about the 19. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. The recipe's pretty simple, I think, right? Just <laughs> give your superstar the ball, continue to feed him. Yeah, don't overthink this one, right? Make sure he's touching the football, but you're also counting on his intelligence in playing the game as well. If it's not there, don't force the run. Just make sure you hang on to the football and keep the clock ticking. They'll go again with Bell. He'll get forward for three down to the 16-yard line. And in this situation with the lead fourth quarter, they're liking keeping the ball on the ground, I'm sure. It's just smart football, but you know the defense has to know it as well. They've got to stop them here. So now we're going to see that loading the box in a big way. Six, seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take, puts a little bit more pressure on your big offensive line. From the gun on third down, it's Roethlisberger. This is caught. And he won't have the touchdown, but he will have the first down as he's tackled at the two. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. 
He's played a great game. It continues right there, even with this lead, confident to throw the pass and have the reception made. There's no doubt who the leader of their team is, is there? There's no doubt who they want to ride all the way to the finish because strategy would tell you run the football, run the clock down. Instead, they're letting him throw it because they feel that confident in what he's getting done. And this seemingly endless drive continues. Now Roethlisberger feeling the pressure here and taken down. A sack back at the seven. Anthony Barr coming in hard on the blitz. He gets him down for a loss of four. Well, if you're going to throw the ball on first and goal from the two, the worst thing that should result is an incompletion for you offensively. But, Brandon, this is a different type of football. Back in my day, first and goal from the two, a lot of big people with big neck rolls, they were on the field trying to ram it into the end zone. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. On second down, it's Bell. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. Five yards on the pickup, and that's going to bring up an interesting third and goal. The fourth quarter here, they've got the lead. They want to keep it on the ground. That's what they're doing. Smart football. Keep the clock grinding. Keep it going. But you got to figure now, they're going to see more people stacked up at the line of scrimmage as they try and bleed it out. Here's Bell, and he is going to lose yardage here. That'll make it fourth down after a loss of one. Now, this feels like old-school football because this has turned into a good old-fashioned goal line stand. So on offense, what do you do now? Do you decide to run it or throw it if you go for it on fourth down? So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. Less than an extra point attempt here. This is an 18-yarder. And Boswell's kick is good. And that will stretch the lead up to 13. So they settle for just the three there, but clearly anything helps when you're trying to salt one away here in the fourth. Without a doubt, I think a touchdown would have been the final nail. But three does give him some breathing room and lets him build up a little cushion. After the successful field goal try, here's Boswell to send it away. That's fielded in the end zone. And the decision to bring it out is going to cost him about seven yards, all told, as he's taken down back shy of the 20. And now out comes Minnesota. And they're hoping to capture some of that magic they had last time out when they were able to put together a scoring drive. But they're still down here, Charles. Not the major concern, though, because of what you talked about. They scored the last time out. They feel good about themselves. They feel like their game plan is now in effect. They know how to attack and what plays they want to put together. But they've got to keep it moving in the right direction because, as you did note, they are down on the scoreboard. first down and the Steeler pressure too much here he's going to go down Stefan to it in there to get him his second sack now in the afternoon well so much for setting the tone of the drive offensively giving up a big sack that loses that kind of yardage not a great start
to throw on second down. Bradford. And this is incomplete. Stephon Diggs, his intended receiver, and it's third down. The effort's always going to be there. Everyone's always going to try and make a catch, but underthrown balls, I think, are the toughest ones to come back and get because usually your momentum's going in the opposite direction when you're trying to stop, break, and come back and get it. The Vikings on third down, not quite 50%, four for nine. This will be third and forever. Now the Georgia Southern man. This is Jarek McKinnon. And he'll take this forward only up to about the seven. Just a yard on the run there, and that's going to bring us to a fourth down. As much as I praise teams for being true to who they are, in this situation, I wonder if maybe they outguessed themselves a little bit. Third down seemed like an obvious passing situation. They chose to run it and then get anywhere close to the first down. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. As expected, they're going for it to keep the drive alive. Let's it fly for Treadwell. And that is incomplete. Mike Zimmer got to be unhappy with how that turned out. And now, boy, the ball's going to go over on downs here inside the 10-yard line. So they really needed points here in a two-score game. Could not come away with anything there on fourth. And while we know they're a little bit discouraged here, they can't check out of this game. You and I have called a good number of games over the course of our career where we've seen these types of situations. Teams get the ball back, and that miracle does occur. So they can't let that dream go just yet. They have to get stout on defense here. Yeah, right now, really hoping for a turnover. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. Now Bell. Oh, and now he bowls him over. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. Only a yard on the pickup there. Second and goal. Be interesting to see now what they do offensively down near the goal line after not much there that time. As the offensive play caller, that may change your sequence now. Instead of coming right back with a running play, you may have to go to the air. And now it's second and goal. They'll try again with Bell. And he is leveled. Knocked down hard at the two-yard line. Give him right around four on the carry. We'll see if they want to keep pounding here on third and goal. That didn't just feel like good defense there. That felt like pride, didn't it? He's already gotten into the end zone twice, trying to get there for a third time. No one likes to have the hat trick against them. They come out with one back and three tight ends. Defense likely bringing pressure here. Third and goal from the two. And this will result in him losing yardage. Back to the three. He lost two, and it brings up fourth. And Anthony Barr just has it all as far as I'm concerned in terms of physique, athletic ability, and now he's versatile as well. When he came out of UCLA, he would played outside linebacker, but also down defensive end. The Vikings can utilize those same sort of skills. Now Chris Boswell for the Steelers' field goal try. From the left hash, a chip shot here. Boswell's kick is good. And that will swell the lead to 16. So give him three there. A good drive gets him inside the five, but they couldn't punch it in. And credit this defense, too. That was the old bend but don't break approach. But it kept the offense out of the end zone. the successful field goal try. Here's Boswell to send it away. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the end line. The Vikings offense now, they get ready to head back on the field. And on that last drive, 
Went for it on fourth, turned it over. But good job by their defense, though. They held them to three, but this offense, they've got to be a little bit better, a little bit more careful here. And sometimes when you see these calls on fourth down when they decide to go for it, it's not necessarily the coach saying, I believe in my offense. Sometimes the coach saying, I believe in my defense. I can afford to go for it here because if we don't get it, I don't think we'll give up more than three. And that's exactly what you happened there. You think that factored in? I do. I think that he had that in his mind going into the game, that I'm going to be aggressive on offense because I know I've got a defense that can hold up their end. Going with a screen for Murray. And he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. A good pick up there on first as the screen pass gets him eight. Decent start there to the drive. Big hill to climb, needing two touchdowns, also a two two-point conversion. So, partner, how do you eat an elephant? I don't eat an elephant. <laughs> Who eats elephant? <laughs> but if you do, you do it one bite at a time. Okay. That's the way they've got to play this, one okay. play at a time. Yes, there's urgency, but they have to be careful as well. Let's go with like a 50-ounce ribeye. One, right. one bite at a time. All right, I'm with you. Second down, Bradford. He'll try and set up the screen. It's complete. And he'll get it out near the 40 to the 39. Personal foul. Face mask. Defense. Well, when you're leading in the fourth quarter, that's not the penalty you want. Not at all. And now your discipline comes into question. Having poise this stage of the game, you can't have those kind of plays. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. From the shotgun, it's Bradford. Pass incomplete. What's the old adage? Be quick, but don't hurry. Well, that went right out the window there. He was hurried, harassed. <laughs> that ball had to be gotten rid of, otherwise he was going to get sacked. And on second and ten now. <laughs> to throw again, Bradford. The left side caught by Diggs. And he's brought down. It's a gain of 11 yards that time, and it produces a new set of downs. Hard to believe his first catch of the game defensively. They bottled him up. That's why they're well on their way to victory. Put your best cover guy on him and then change the coverages behind him throughout the game. Brackets, double, zone, man, you name it. Make sure he gets a lot of angles. down Bradford and this is intercepted and that should do it picked up by the former first rounder Artie Burns the 30 20 and they will finally get to him but a great return has set him up first and goal at the five he had his eyes on the end zone he got close at least he set the offense up nicely but he's probably mad he didn't take that one to pay dirt i agree with you and you know he's going to get teased because he didn't get it all the way into the end zone but if they don't score now if they don't get a touchdown he won't just get teased they'll be glaring at him how'd you not score shift now to the Vikings defense and a really nice job last time offense had great field position but they were able to hold them just four plays and they had to hit the field goal we saw the benefits of practice there from the defense though didn't we because most teams when they got that type of field position that they have to start defense on they treat it almost like what we call sudden change you know after a turnover or a big kick return whatever that is you tell the guys listen you got to bow up you got to get in there make sure you don't give up any more than a field goal they, they bowed up all right we'll see if they bow up again again we'll see the pistol here after the interception here's roethlisberger complete 
sometimes the coverage is so good, no matter what you're doing on offense, you just can't shake anyone free. They try their best to find someone open, but they took away every passing alley, every angle, and shut the play down. Second down here after the incomplete pass. Now Roethlisberger going to hand to Bell. And he's going to get him about three yards closer. He's down to about the two. Time for a break. We'll come back to wrap this one up after this. So the Steelers with the football as we get you reset. They've got it third and goal here as they try to finish off their victory. They come out here in the eye. Big play here. Third down and goal from the two. And not going to be able to push this forward. He runs into a wall right at the line of scrimmage. And now following that timeout, the defense back out onto the field. Now Chris Boswell for the Steelers field goal try. This to make it a three score game late. And Boswell's kick is good. And that will make this now a 19 point advantage. So yet another field goal to end the drive. That has been a very common theme. He's now hit five of them in this game. Yeah, Brandon, as an offense, you hate that you've had to call on your kicker so often, but you have to love the fact that time and time again, he's come through. For the successful field goal try, here's Boswell to send it away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he'll be brought down at the 23, make it the 24-yard line. Now the Minnesota offense set to take over again. They've lost this one. Their offense has struggled. Do they try to put together something here at the end just to take into next week? Yeah, sometimes teams want to do that and coaches want to. I remember one time I was on a team and we were losing late in a game like this and you knew it was lost. It was over, right? And a coach called a running play and pretty much said to everyone, I want to see something executed well before we get out of here. And that was the message to the team. Just something to build Just on. Just something to build on, get it done, and maybe we can look at that and say, we'll get better as we go forward. Here's Murray now as they run it to start the drive. And a nice little quick spin move before he's dropped. And a pretty good gain. A nice run there, nine yards. And it'll be second down. To throw is Bradford. Now a hit, and the ball comes out. Bradford has lost it. Now they got to get to the line quickly. On third down, Bradford. And incomplete here on third down. Another wayward pass. You know, things started out poorly in this game, and to be frank, they just really haven't gotten much better. And all that does is emboldened a secondary. They feel good about what's going on, and they just play better and better. Oh. 
And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter, let's see how this plays out. Got to try it here. He's back to throw. He's going to let it fly. And this is going to be incomplete. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And that's going to be just about all she wrote for this one. So they tried to go for it for pride, but it really wouldn't have mattered. This one, it was already determined. No doubt about it. This one was over a while ago. Marching back out there, ready for the next possession. Here comes a Vikings defense. And not a good performance by them or by their offense, for that matter. It just hasn't been a good game. And it's real easy at this point to point fingers. Hey, you guys didn't get a whole lot done today. Didn't give us much of a cushion. But the truth of the matter is, having played defense, your pride says whatever your offense gives you, you're supposed to allow one point less. Mm -hmm. So they're going to feel like they let them down yeah. as well. Yeah, I guess fingers could be pointed on both sides. And a great spot to start this drive from here. Roethlisberger with a give to Bell. And he's going to be stopped dead in his tracks. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. I like a guy who understands the situation. I also like a guy who you look at him and you say, that looks like a guy who knows the coach is going to say, guess what? You drop this one, you'll be carrying around the training facility for an entire week. <laughs> Maybe flashback to high school or college, carrying <laughs> it around campus, right? The old gauntlet drill, right? Anyone get the ball out while he's, while he's sitting in class and bring it back to the coach? He's in big trouble. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. Give him six on the play, and that's going to bring up a third down. And Charles, I think when the schedule comes out, all teams, no matter where they're predicted to finish, talk about protecting your home turf. They were able to do that here in this one. Similar to a tennis match, right? Not letting them break your serve. That way you hold on to it. They got it done, and they feel very good about that victory. So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com. The Steelers are winners as we say so long from Heinz Field.